If it's any consolation, the next two maps are a little bit more interesting, so let's go. Lagjo Ruins 7. We're getting there, we're getting there. This map is, like I said, a little bit more interesting. It has a lot of water in it. We're into the segment of maps. There's only two of them, but uh, at least they have something different. The segment of maps in this game that have... Also, these, are, these bridges are clearly supposed to just be one tile, and they've just made a bridge out of multiple of them. Anyway, are the water maps in the ruins. They're kind of cool. They had sort of a bit of a sense of continuity here. Now I've gone so deep into the ruins that we're in some kind of ancient floodgate system, I guess. It's pretty interesting. The map here actually reminds me of one of the heroes maps, weirdly enough, and I'm sure at least one guided map as well. Now there is one chest here. I believe nothing on this map drops a chest key, so you'll either need to bring your own or bring a thief if you want, want that chest. I might go ahead and look up what's in that because I figure off the top of my head. But as you can see, this map is full of magic users. It's almost entirely magic user based, so... Apart from one or two bone walkers here and there, but it is mostly magic users. So high resistance is going to be really helpful here. Definitely going to be needing Natasha at some point here. Also, the boss here drops a black gem. Technically, this is worth 30,000 gold, but you sell items for half their value, so it's actually 15,000. But yeah, the black gem is one of the gems that are unique to Sacred Stones. It's not in any of the other GBA games. There's one other gem like that. Now, some of these guys do have Shadow Shot, so I'll just want to pinpoint which ones have it. That one has it. I think he's the only one, actually. It looks like he's the only one. Also, this Death Goyle with almost cap strength for some reason, but it's kind of weird there's just a single Death Goyle there. Steel Bow, Steel Bow. Yeah, so Shadow Shot here is going to be a problem. I want to have one of my high movement people down here just to get rid of Shadow Shot immediately. And there's no stone, thankfully, there. Firstly, though, I might want to go ahead and switch up some items. Yeah, especially your inventory is looking not that good at this point. But you can use Silver Swords now, which is good. Ah, uh, this feels weird, but I just want to get rid of that. I have one spear. That's the only ranged lance that I have left in here. I might as well just take the killer one. I'd rather give the ranged lance to Tana, I guess. Let's see... Yeah, let's go ahead and get that to Tana. Cormac sort of already has one. He needs a new sword. He isn't a C rank, though. Let's just trade some random person that steel sword. Don't have much in the way of swords in the convoy that he can use, though. Yeah, it looks like steel is the best he has. Let me see who has any steel swords that I can borrow. Seth has a one-use one. Well, you've got a seven-use steel sword. I wish I could combine that with the other one, but I can't. You barely have any good weapons left. This is the point where I'm going to have to use random other people as storage. Uh, let's see... Low-use killer weapons could still end up performing a critical and being useful that way, so... So many axes here that I probably don't need. Let's go ahead and take another killer axe, and... Yeah, Kalark is highlighted. There's a reason for that, but I'll be talking about that in a bit. Let's see, I might as well grab that. Ross is fine, Ewan should be fine, Loot is fine, Natasha could use another Lightning Tome. Especially since that weighs her down heavily. I think I gave... it's only 10 uses. I don't like doing this, but Convoy Armory. Now I'm going to give that other Lightning to Natasha. And with that... okay, jo yeah, I think Josh was alright. 
So, formation. Like I said, I want someone with high movement down here, I guess. Okay, they need a ranged weapon in order to reach that, unless they're Ephraim. So I either need to use Ephraim or I need to have Tana go there, or Cormag. Let's do both! Yes, let us do both. So, Natasha needs to be- where is the highest concentration of magic users that will end up being- that will end up fighting? I guess down here? Although, we have magic users pretty much everywhere at this point. Garak will go wherever Ross is, and then Luke should go wherever Ross is as well. Hmm. Cormag could kind of fly around these channels. Maybe I should have Cormag down there. And you'll swap places with loot, and uh, you are going to be not here. Because I don't actually want you. We get 11 deployment slots in this one. So for my last deployment slot, I'm going to want to bring either Tevis or Mia. But at the moment, I'm not sure who. It's always useful to bring a dancer, so I might as well go for Tevis at this point. I'll definitely be using Mia later in my run of the ruins. Now, where would a dancer be most appreciated? Is the question. Probably down there, but they already have uh, quite a lot of people. Yeah, I suppose you could go around this central part. Okay, I guess let's move out. And still more of this music. Yeah. More droning music. And there's stone, right? Uh... Yeah, this is kind of a problem, because we don't have much in the way of... If anyone gets petrified, they're very, very likely to die. Okay, first things first, though. You. You die now. Don't want no Shadow Shot today. And, of course, he gets the crit in the second attack. But at least that Shadow Shot gone. You... Okay, you, you don't have Stone, you just have Demon Surge. One of you here has... You both just have Demon Surge. But the one in there, yeah, the one in there is stone. So... Yeah, 21 damage even to someone with somewhat decent resistance. Although Tana's resistance isn't that amazing, considering that she's a wife and knight, not a falcon knight. I think falcon knight gives a slightly bigger promotion bonus towards resistance. I almost call it special defense for a second. No, this is not Pokemon. Yeah, 19 resistance is okay, but not really, really amazing. See, even Ewan would potentially be at risk here. Especially if he gets petrified. Speaking of at risk, I don't like that gargoyle. And I also really, really, really don't want Cormag to get hit by a lot of things because... Yes, Cormag really, really hates magic. And that thing has stone. So I kind of need to eliminate it as soon as possible. There is also that thing. Okay, for now I might want to just focus on this end. And just stay away from that Gorgon. Even though that's kind of easier said than done. How much damage do you do? 37. Ah. Yeah, it's always a problem on maps that have a huge number of enemy magic users is just the... I probably should have had... Tevi's here, so I could dance for Amelia so she could kill both of the stone gorgons in one go, but, uh, anyway. But yeah, maps with lots of magic uses are always a problem, since the vast majority of people that you tend to have in your army tends to not have good resistance. Oh, 
oh yeah, these moguls being flying is also an issue. Actually, probably should have given the loot an extra restore staff. Let's see how I do this then. Wait a minute. Gotta watch out for that. Thankfully, you can't reach that far. Alright, Teddy's now has animations back on. Probably should turn these off, but I guess we haven't seen them for a little while. Yeah, I want to get that thing out of the way, because that's the biggest obstacle to detach it down there. Oh, you're not even using stone. That's actually fine by me. I can heal that off with loot easily. But stone is going to be harder to fix, thanks to not having a restore staff on this end of the map. Now, I'm pretty sure that's the only thing that can hit Ephraim from here. Although he may be in stone range of the other Gorgon. I need to check the map once we get back to it. Let me see. Wait a minute. No, he's clearly not. I knew you'd do that, which is why I have Natasha nearby. But I didn't miss anyway. <laughs> yes, Cormac really, really hates these things. And I wish I had a ranged axe on Ross. 35 damage. Ah. I'm so glad that I got rid of Shadow Shot early. Okay, now how wait a minute. Right, the only ranged attacker I really have here is the loot. Alright, hi there, Gorgon. Where is my ah? Might as well just go CHOP YOU! 81, really? With 53 critical. Well, at least he didn't get hit in return. But he did get not critted. Okay, plan here is to lure that mogul into a situation where I can actually attack it. Position, I was... That was more the word that I wanted to say. <laughs> Loot is 19 and 99. Like, we, at least one other person has been this Ruins run, but I forget exactly who. Okay, that's just Demon Surge. That's also just Demon Surge. So I'm probably okay with Amelia going over this way. Even though that Mogul will probably be able to attack from an angle where it's not so easily countered. Okay, yeah, Ephraim's just barely out of that range. Okay, you have six move. So this has five move, and you also have two range. Okay, she can get out of range of that now, but... Gotta be careful, because sooner or later that thing will catch up with her. He's going to get attacked by Demon Surge after this. So that missing is a good thing. Sorry if I'm not really saying that much about stuff, but... Large numbers of magical enemies attacking all at once tends to make me pretty nervous. Just want to get through this initial rush here. I get the feeling there are going to be reinforcements from there. Two, which compounds things. Speaking of compounding things, that's actually not enough damage. But at this point, if somebody gets petrified, Natasha can just heal. Unless Natasha herself gets petrified, but Natasha's probably the lowest priority target for them to do that to. 
thanks to the lower hit rate. Because the AI does tend to purely think in terms of numbers, rather than who's actually the biggest threat. Or they could just go for Demon Surge. Yeah, it does feel like they would rather use this than Stone most of the time. Which is fine by me, because Stone is really, really bad. I forget if it was earlier or if it was here where I actually failed to run of the ruins due to Natasha getting stoned and then crit killed. Not Natasha, it was Vanessa. Get their names mixed up sometimes, but yeah, it was Vanessa. Okay, I need to heal you definitely, but you at least went to, into a position where I can attack you. So most of what you have to watch out is when you get right onto three range with them so they can only use stone, then they'll obviously go for that. Well, a reinforcement came from the stairs, but not the stairs that I was thinking about. Can Ross one-shot? I'm sure he can with the silver. Yep, let's just chop you with the one-shot. As much as I really want to do the Ross and loot support, I, it's not really the time at this point. Not really the time. Yeah, because I desperately need to heal Garrick. If I didn't need to heal Garrick here, I probably would do the support. And that's the one experience she needed. Well, at least she gained speed there. That's not max speed, I believe, but... Yeah, I think her speed cap's like 26 or something. Probably 26 or something. Okay, that's actually a good crit. Now, let's see if Amelia can actually contribute something here. She can't quite reach that Gorgon. Because I really don't want to have to expose anybody to stone, but I guess I'm gonna have to. Demon Surge does have a pretty cool animation. She's often getting pierced for its Tana. And a pathetic amount of goals. Yeah, might as well go for that. Gorgons do have relatively low HP for monsters, which kind of makes sense given that they're the monster mages. Though their movement type was for some reason coded as Flyer in the Japanese version. Come to think of it, here would be the only time that'd be relevant, because it'd mean that Gorgons could actually move in the water. Never really thought of that before, but yeah, in the Japanese version, this Gorgon would probably be able to move around there, because... I mean, at least... Yeah, because from what I remember, their movement type was classified as uh, flyer rather than mage, like it's supposed to be, but... I mean, unless it's just, like, for the purposes of not getting slowed down by... But, but I mean, flyers wouldn't get slowed down by deserts anyway, so that wouldn't really make a difference. Anyway, though, kind of rambling here, but then again, this is to be expected in one of these episodes. Only 17 enemies left, though. This isn't a particularly... Well, there aren't that many... That, there aren't particularly many enemies on this map, is what I was trying to say there. And I'm so glad that you're equipping Demon Surge and not Stone. And, of course, get the critical there. I did have a tangent prepared for this part, but... Actually, not this part. Um, wait, no. Let me just rephrase that. I did have a tangent prepared, but it's for the next part, not this part. There is a reason for that. Because the next map is yet another one that reuses a gimmick from an earlier GBA Fire Emblem game. Well, this time, it's surprisingly not FE6 for some reason. It's actually... Okay, you don't have stone. That's good. You'll see. But I do have a tangent prepared for that episode. Okay, I'm going to be luring one Gorgon down there, and I'm going to be forcibly luring you, but thankfully Stone has a terrible hit rate, so that's good. I didn't eat my words there. And Cormac is going to be eating a lot more than just words if he gets hit by this, which he probably will. Yes, he did. Okay, exactly two more Javelin. Yeah! Well, exactly one more Javelin use now. I have Physic, yeah, Cormac should probably be fine. Well, this, what isn't fine is me not actually one-rounding this thing. 
always the double-edged sword of mage versus mage fights. Neither of you can really do that much damage to each other. But mages are the only people who don't take enormous damage from enemy magic, so they're often one of your best bets against that, except uh, in the games where Pegasus Knights have really, really considerable resistance stats, which in some games they don't really. That is a lot of sudden mogul reinforcements. It's like moguls from everywhere. I knew that there'd be reinforcements from here too, and of course you have cat magic. So let's just try and get rid of this. No crit, that's unfortunate. Actually, wait a minute, I probably should have done something else first. Ugh, because of that happening. Oh, right, okay, that's bad, because I need to heal Cormag, but I also need to heal Joshua, because otherwise... Oh, crap, I just realised. That's not good, because now Joshua can potentially get attacked by both the Gorgon and... Okay, I really need to recover Joshua, but I also need that Gorgon to be dead. Because I don't think Cormag can get out of its range. And it will kill Cormag. Actually, maybe Cormag can get out of its... No, he can't. Because every single tile in the water here is covered by that one. And every single tile in the waterway in between is covered by this one. And I don't want to have Natasha kill that one, because otherwise Joshua will be stuck petrified and possibly crit by that. So... What is my best course of action here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then an extra 2 range. Cormag can get out of range of that. And this is assuming that I actually remember to use the restore stuff. This wouldn't have happened if Josh were in crit, but I guess we're making the most of it. Alright, yeah, so Josh would still use up his movement, but... Basically, yeah, he, he can now dodge things, essentially. And that's what I needed to happen. Because uh, I could try and go for this Gorgon, but the best hit rate I have is 82, and if I miss that, Cormac is probably dead. And my luck with high 80s, is, or low 80s, or anything in the 80s, has not been that good this playthrough. But I'm going to try it anyway! Okay, good. That did not come back to bite me. And yeah, it's the same wooden bridge sprite that was, um, or at least battle background that was earlier in the game. Uh, this should hopefully not come back to bite me. That's good. And... And that's one dead stone gorgon, which is excellent, and potentially two dead bow enemies, because you have the Philly shields. Or I could just, uh, dancer. I'm not used to having a dancer at this point. Guess I... It's like earlier in Ephraim's route, where it takes so long for Teddy's to join. But is it worth refreshing her? Because if she stays there, both of these could potentially suicide into her. Whereas here, all I need to do is just kill off this mogul with Amelia. Yeah, I don't think I really need to have her keep moving. Gotta remember that you have a horse slayer. And would defeat the point of her staying there if Ephraim went any closer, because then he'd be in range. Alright, gotta remember there is one mogul from there, but it's gonna get shot by Ross next turn. <laughs> Splatting that eyeball three times over. And I guess now's as good a time as any. <laughs> Addressing them by Hey You. Yeah, that's a nice start for support, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so you've spent the entire game fighting together, and yet you only know her as Mage Woman. <laughs> Son of Warrior Garcia Ross. <laughs> I remember reading about this before, I'm pretty sure.
Actually, not all magic, because you can't use dark without glitching, but another reason why I'd like to glitch to get her to use dark. It feels pretty appropriate. <laughs> I love the blunt answer there. No, this is not one of the games with reclassing. <laughs> okay, I'm annoyed I'm only getting that now. That's actually pretty good. I need to look up the rest of that. I don't think I've seen the rest of those supports, but they seem like they'd be pretty hilarious. It's all, you often see supports that involve magic users and, come to think of it, now I'm reminded of Muriel and Vake, but it's often the Axe users who end up clashing with the magic users because they tend to be polar opposites. The Axe generally being seen as the the kind of epitome of dumb muscle in weapon form and magic being the epitome of smart people, so... You often find Axe users and magic users clashing in supports like that. And then Awakening introduced a class that actually, uh... Well, here Joshua's high HP might save him. But yeah, then Awakening introduced a class that is uh, an axe-using healer, which would normally be kind of a paradox. I'd still kind of like to see an axe and tome-using class. I know that Awakening Dreadfighter technically does that. Okay, okay, wait, that's... That's fine. Yeah, because the HP bar did stop decreasing before she did a second attack, so maybe it is exclusive to the NTSC version, or American version, or... I mean, I'm not- I'm pretty sure that standards like PAL and NTSC being television terms just don't apply to Game Boy Advance games in general, but, I mean, even though I am playing this one on the television, thanks to the Wii U, but that's not what was supposed to be done with these kind of games, but yeah. Still, people tend to refer to them as PAL and NTSC out of habit, and we had another big surge of moguls. And also a bail. And annoyingly, you are making me break this wall just to get to you. I can't kill you from over it. Unless I... No, not even with a longbow I couldn't kill you from over it. That's really annoying. Okay, speaking of killing things, I'm going to first kill this thing. That's good. I didn't want to risk getting attacked by that. And then I'm going to kill the Gorgon. And then that thing is going to attack Joshua and hopefully get criticals. And then you're going to... Okay, that's Demon Surge, not Stone. And she crit anyway, so it's fine. But I was worried for a second that was Stone, because if that had hit her, that might have resulted in bad things. Obviously, Cormag is not going to rush into there alone, so he's going to pull back, and I'm going to need to heal him later. This map is kind of interesting. There, are, there aren't that many enemies, but this map is so spread out that it takes a while to kill them all anyway. I'm already 28 minutes into this. Although I did spend at least six of them in preparations. I do apologize for that. I just had to switch around some weapons and things like that. I mean... You're in an annoying position now. Except now we have a support going. And it being a fire affinity support means that... Okay, that thing could potentially kill itself. If, although, if I take 16 and then... Two... Oh, you do even more. You do 18. So yeah, 16 and 18. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not enough. I'm pretty sure that isn't enough. But... Just in case. I'm going to do this. And I guess keep you there for support. I don't like wasting brave swords like this, but I just really want to get through this map as quickly as possible. All in the interests of that, I'm going to break that wall in one turn, and then I'm going to... Unfortunately, require exposing myself to that horse slayer, which means I'm just gonna go ahead and use... Again, this is another case where just the damage is so high that I wish this was a one-shot. It just feels kind of a waste having to use two uses of this weapon like this, but like I said, in the interest of going fast. 
Because at this point, pretty much everyone is... Let me just check. Okay, Teddy's the only one who here who isn't level 18. So, yeah, effectively everyone is level 18. So, 20. Why did I say 18? I'm... Why did I say 18? I don't even know why I said 18, but yeah, 20. So, oh, that's probably because I saw Teddy's as level being 18, but anyway. So yeah, pretty much everyone is 20. There is no benefit to these maps dragging on any longer because we're not going to get any ex extra experience in the reinforcements. So what I'm going to do is basically just try and finish these maps as fast as I can. Which is probably nowhere near as fast as like pro FE speedrunners can, but still. I'm keeping animations on because that's just how I do things. Even though I could save a lot of time by turning them off, I still don't really like turning animations off in these games. It's just, it's just, again, you just see the personalities of the characters and the animations and their unique palettes, which is why I was annoyed at the sheer lack of unique palettes in Fates. Okay, at least that wasn't a horse slayer. was going to die that turn anyway, so that critical didn't really matter, but okay. And I'm guessing just because this map is kind of a jerk, they're going to be spawning more reinforcements this turn. Yes, they are. Only two of them, though, which is better than, they could, than, than it could have been. And this is... Actually, that's even better than it could have been. Goodbye, Bale. But that Gorgon there does have stone. And I just realized I forfeited that chest thanks to... Uh... See, here's a case where you know you're going to get a one-shot, so you're only going to be using one use of a legendary weapon, and I feel like it's worth it just to avoid risking that extra damage. There is just way too many enemies down there. I need to get more people down here. That's that's the the thing of interest at this point. So I haven't seen any reinforcements come out of there yet. I know there will be, so I'm just gonna park someone on that. And so I was about to say smash you, but that doesn't really have as much impact when you're not one-shotting. Of course you get the crit on the second attack. Why wouldn't you do that? Uh, I suppose... Oh, hey, that actually does... Oh, support the support! Yeah, you have an A support with Teddies. That's actually doing something. I pretty much only did that for just story reasons earlier on, but this is actually doing something in gameplay now. Again, probably would have been better from a gameplay standpoint if I'd done a support with Ross, because those two actually fight together a lot more, but... Steer... Hmm... Demon Surge... Stone and Demon Surge. Okay, thankfully this isn't, um... This isn't Final Fantasy X, where if you get turned to stone in the water, you instantly die. That would be pretty terrible if that was the case. Oh, this is annoying. There's just too many magic users down there for Cormac to really be able to do anything in that part of the map. Because he gets two-shotted by pretty much any magic. Who hasn't moved? Oh, right. I wonder if I should keep you in here. I get the feeling that there's going to be more reinforcements coming up, up those stairs. Or should I say down those stairs? Don't really know. That was a weird place to put a reinforcement. I guess this Gorgon's just a chess guard. Hmm. You also have Demon Surge. Well, I could try and have Cormac do something productive, I guess. Okay, first though, I need to heal him now. Otherwise, we're in for very, very bad times. Do I use a Hulma here? I mean, I've only, I've barely even used a Hulma at all, so might as well. Nine enemies left. That's interesting. 
Shadow Shot Reinforcement. Of course, the one shot is that, well, it's really heavy, but the other good thing about Shadow Shot is that you can't counterattack at melee range, so I can just do that and you're dead. Right, that's a longbow, so I can't counter it with a spear, probably. There is also stone. And you have a spear. And there are some more Demon Surge users there. Hmm. Oh, I'd kind of rather have Ephraim down there, but no, he's not going to... Or is he? Hmm. I may actually be able to get him into support range. Thanks to Teddy's. Dancers are always useful to have around. Thanks to the ridiculous Swift Soul movement range he has. Yeah, I think that actually is support range. So, yeah, I can do this. Even though this is still not a completely guaranteed dodge rate, but still. It's at least much more... I almost had a heart attack there, because it looked like that was delaying for one second. Which led me to think that maybe that actually hit, which would have been horrible. Okay, only seven enemies left. And they're all down there. Yeah, this is a pretty weird map. I guess it being so full of magic users, it makes sense there wouldn't be that many of them, because any more and it'd be even more insane. But, kind of a strange map overall. Okay, you attack from a position where I could kill you next turn with a spear. Speaking of killing with a spear... I think the convoy shop does sell javelins, so if I'm lacking in one to two range options later, I might get some of those. Okay, this is good. Let me guess, you also have Shadow Shot. No, you don't. Okay. You do have 100 gold, though. And that's not one rounding, but at least I have a healer nearby. Still very, very small amounts of gold, but that spear is almost gone to lure these Gorgons like that, but I guess I'll have to just content myself with finishing off this guy. Now I just need to rush some people down there to finish off the remaining enemies. And Teddy's is going to end up... Actually, wait, no, Teddy's can still help you. But she's going to end up getting outpaced pretty quickly. Since there are less magic users down there, maybe Cormag can run in there. Okay, so Ephraim is getting there. We are kind of close to that. I suppose we should go that way just to see if we can break open that. Well, I doubt Loot and Ross are going to be doing anything else productive in this chapter, and I doubt Garrick is either. I'm about to say that Cormag is stuck here fighting those, these things, but... No, I could use Joshua. Let's see. Okay, that's a little over half, so that's good. Just use a regular iron. That's an axe for some reason, but lance for that. Okay, that wall is open. We can now officially rush in there. And you are get silver sorted. <laughs> yeah, I often use the term sword as a verb when I play Zelda games. Like, sword that enemy, sword him, things like that. Just because you end up sorting a lot of things in Zelda, usually. And in some cases, sorting something does not necessarily mean it's hacking it. tend to get a lot of use out of various different types of... Well, let me see. That's just Demon Surge. 
that's also just Demon Surge, and then the boss has stone. Alright, let's go to the very edge of that range. Ready to rush in next turn. Well, hopefully rush in next turn. Not sure if I'll have enough movement range on most of my people to get in there apart from Ephraim, but we can try. And only four enemies left. I wonder if I did end up blocking some reinforcements with Garrick, I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Well, not we'll have to see, but because we won't see, but might look that up later. Oh, of course, more reinforcements. But... Okay, that range is deceptive, because all you have for the long range is a one-use left javelin. Unless you can one-shot that Gorgon, I doubt that, though. No, you definitely can't. Okay, that's actually problematic, because I don't want Ephraim getting hit with stone. I don't know if that boss moves or not, but I'm guessing that it does. It would make sense if it did. Because a lot of bosses in here so far have definitely moved, so... It makes sense to conclude that Gorgon also moves. Which is kind of a problem. If I kill off that... And then make sure that Ephraim is... Uh, can Ephraim get into a position to get into support range with Tana without getting attacked by a ton of things at once. This is going to seem silly, but I'm going to maybe have Ephraim just hide in the corner here. The only real risk is that if he gets hit with stone and then the other Gorgon crits him. But let's, let's just not think about that. And hopefully, not thinking about it will make it not happen. Hopefully our cognition will make that a reality. I think at this point... Actually, wait, they... And they could attack Ephraim before using stone and ruin their chances of killing him because the AI is dumb. Or the boss could just decide to break the pattern and not move. Uh, yeah, that was a weird turn. After times like these, though, when I'd need Luna. Not that, though. That's not a good idea. Alright, let's see. Let's just wipe you out. I should be able to get rid of all of them this turn, though. Because once the one blocking Ephraim and Tana, they're probably having some romantic time in the corner there, getting... Um, now they're stuck in there because there's a Gorgon in the entrance. But, with that Gorgon out of the way, these two will just be able to run in and kill off that boss. So, let's see how we can best eliminate this Gorgon. Uh, let's go for this. Cormac, I need to check his skill, and maybe his skill is not that high. And he has a pretty good skill growth, too. I mean, considering that his growths are cloned from a hero's. But for some reason, his accuracy hasn't been that good lately. Yeah, 19 is not the best. I feel like on average that should be a lot higher. But anyway, there is only one enemy left here, so... And it is not going to die to... I actually meant to say Ephraim isn't going to die, but... That also works, because it's also died a two-hit from the Iron Lance. I have to use something better, like this. And uh, a crit would have been good there. But yeah, with this then, it's this map over. And I believe the next map is also pretty heavy on magic users, so... That's going to be fun. The next map, though, is one where you want a lot of flyers, from what I remember. And we get the Black Gem. Okay, thankfully we are just sending an item to supply, we're not actually throwing something away. I should probably sell that immediately though, otherwise um, it's just kind of useless letting it sit in my inventory. So with that, like I said, next time is going to be Flyer Central.